Good evening, everyone. Just waiting to get started here. Give us a couple minutes. There you are. You are. Here I am. Hi, everyone. Good to meet you. We're going to get started here in just a couple minutes. Can you unmute? leave it. We have quite a few people registered to attend tonight. And how many do we have logged in so far? 16 logged in. So. 16 on Zoom. While I'm talking, just so everyone knows, you're welcome to throw chats in the chat uh, area if you have them for me. And then uh, Jim, who's my husband, who I think you can see, I'm not sure if you can see him or not, is going to be moder monitoring the chats. And then I have my son next to me. He's uh, my technical support here. So, all right, it is seven o'clock. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at our uh, Google Lead Generation program. Um, I just wanted to give you a little heads up. We have some... Uh, Oh, my technical guy just messed my screen up here. Hold on a second. All right. Just wanted to let you know that um, we have a couple more webinars coming up. You've probably seen them in the uh, USCCA uh, Instructors Forum, but we're doing one on some Facebook advertising do and don'ts. Every single day of my life, I have CPL advertising for businesses all over the country coming through my feed on Facebook. And every single day of my life, I reach out to instructors and say, hey, you're in Delaware, you're in Atlanta, you're in Texas, and your ad is delivering to me here in Michigan. Check your ad settings. And so people are burning up ad dollars in markets that they don't even belong in. So we're going to do a little webinar on Facebook ads. How come I'm not able to? There we go. Uh, we've got a online webinar coming up with Marcus Weldon. He is a friend of mine. He is known locally here in Detroit as the Santa shooter. Marcus uh, was dressed as Santa Claus one evening. I Gosh, I want to say it, it's been about seven or eight years ago now. Uh, he was at a Christmas party with a girl. Her tire was flat on her car. He stopped at a gas station to put air in the tire. Uh, there was an altercation at the gas station between the girl he was with and some guys that had pulled up and started harassing her. Um, he walked up to the situation and said, hey, guys, leave her alone. And they ended up drawing weapons and shooting at him. CPL holder, he drew his firearm and fired back. He did strike the individual, did not kill him. Uh, ran, dialed 911, spoke to the police, spoke to the 911 operators. At the end of the day, he ended up being charged with seven felonies for his behavior. Everything he did was completely legal. Um, it was surviving the system for him. We're going to bring him on, uh, let him talk a little bit about how it happened, what happened uh, going through the court system. He is now a proud USCCA member. Um, so uh, he funded the 
situation before all on his own. So now he's a USCCA member and doesn't really need to worry about the financial aspects of that. Uh, we've got a webinar on uh, creating and teaching online classes. I myself have a number of online classes that I do. I just did uh, two days ago a court ordered firearm safety course with a gentleman who got caught drinking and driving with a firearm in his vehicle with his CPL and um, ended up getting his CPL revoked, his gun taken away from him and things of that nature. His uh, court officer mandated a safety training with him. I did that online with him and issued him a certificate. I also have a class that I do for Michigan CPL renewal. Um, I have a live class that I do for that. I also have a recorded class that I do for that. The recorded class is video on demand. In the state of Michigan, people who are renewing their CPL are required to do a three-hour training session of review of the training for the Michigan CPL. They can self-study. They can take an actual class. I've got an actual class recorded and online and people order it every single day. I make money while I sleep. It's a great way to make a living and um, we're gonna go over doing some of that. We have Ken Kelly, if any of you know what Magnaport is. Magnaport is barrel porting of firearms. His dad, Larry Kelly, who has now passed, um, created the method. You've seen Kenny's work. He's the gentleman that we're going to be interviewing. You've seen his work in the movie Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You've seen him all over Hollywood. He he does a lot of gun work for Hollywood. Um, he's been Pistol Smith of the Year by Gun Magazine. Um, he's going to join us here in the studio and talk to everyone about what is Magnaport and some of the cool things they do. We're also going to have a webinar on creating and owning your own brand. I know that we are all USCCA certified instructors, and that's great, but you want to create and own your own brand uh, moving forward. So we're going to talk about it. It's just like a personal identity. It's uniquely you, how to develop that and uh, move forward. And then we, our final webinar for the year is called Back to Basics, Get Ready for 2023. And we're going to talk about all the topics that we talked about all year. Um, I've been on the uh, USCCA site running webinars for a couple months now, telling people all about Google and all the things that they can do to put butts in seats for their classes. And um, this is just gonna be a wrap up of everything we've talked about all year. So uh, tonight's objectives, we want to talk about uh, Google and how the USCC instructors have a wealth of opportunity for lead generation, both paid and free through Google. And unfortunately, I've spoken to probably a dozen instructors who've actually fallen prey to pricey digital marketing firms who promised them the world and then delivered nothing or, or little to them. I've spoken to people who've spent as little as $600 with SEO marketing that uh, some digital company came at them with. I've spoken to instructors who've given, um, Jim, help me out here, GoDaddy, uh, five grand to do a website. And um, he's been working with them for, three to six months now and has received nothing. Uh, you do not need fancy SEO programs in order to utilize Google to capture leads. Uh, what you do need is the knowledge of how Google works. And we're gonna go through that tonight. We're gonna discuss how you can benefit from my knowledge and some tools that we have available to you. And we're gonna discuss ways for you to automate your day-to-day -day marketing activities. So who are we? Um, I like to point this out to everyone is that you don't know what you don't know. That's one of my famous quotes. Me, um, I am the owner of Detroit Arms. We at one time were a FFL, a gun store here in metropolitan Detroit. We opened it in conjunction with a CPL training business where we taught CPL classes. And then we had a storefront where we would sell all kinds of concealed carry gear. Um, I was not a fan of running a gun store. So uh, about five years into owning a store, I decided to close it down 
and uh, just focus completely on training 24 seven. There wasn't a lot of money in guns. There wasn't a lot of money in uh, product. And I figured um, my passion was teaching. So that's where we're at. Jim, you want to tell people a little bit about who you are? Sure. Yep. So um, I, uh, that the, the whole gun store thing was my big fat hairy idea. Uh, yes, know, Dream was. wanted a bakery. <laughs> yes, she I got at a gun store. Uh, but shortly after uh, I, I convinced her we needed to do that, uh, I uh, was a software developer and uh, was developing some software in the emergency communication space, uh, which got acquired uh, and then uh, by a company called Geos, uh, which is a uh, international emergency response coordination center that essentially manages all of the uh, the panic buttons around the world that are satellite uh, devices. Uh, and uh, joined them, uh, uh, was a CTO for them. Uh, and then that company was acquired once again by Garmin, uh, which you've probably heard of. And uh, so uh, I just finished up uh, uh, the kind of post acquisition uh, time for that. And, uh, and now I'm doing, uh, uh, doing the next thing, uh, which is uh, uh, re-engaging and helping my wife, who I effectively abandoned uh, to, uh, mm -hmm. to run this business for about 13 years. And uh, I figured I'd come back and uh, throw a little software uh, uh, knowledge uh, uh, her way and uh, help her uh, do some automation in her business. So that she'll talk to you a little bit about that this evening. All right, so let's get started. So um, everybody says, why Google? Why not just standard social media? The reason is that Google currently holds 94.88% of the mobile search market share. Uh, as of January of this year, which is a little dated, uh, Google processes over 3.5 billion searches every day. So it's a pretty, pretty big market share. When you look at who's the most visited website on the internet, Google would be number one, YouTube, then Facebook, then Amazon, then Wikipedia. So you see that it is in fact the world's most visited website. What we're looking for here is um, standing out on Google when people put in firearms training and whatever your municipality is, when they're putting in uh, concealed carry classes, when they're putting in anything that has to do with anything uh, that we do as instructors, there is a uh, free portal on Google and it's called a Google My Business Profile. And our goal is to get you on that profile, get your information optimized, and um, make sure that people can find you when they go to look for an instructor. This is an example of my uh, Google My Business profile. It's got how many um, people have left reviews for me. It's got pictures of my classroom. It's got some of the reviews that people have written. It shows them my address. It shows them my hours, my phone number, my link to my website, and so much more. So we're gonna talk about getting everybody here on Google. Um, it's 100% free. There's no cost to host a bit Google business profile on Google. And uh, you may have heard it in the past referred to as Google My Business, but now it's called a Google Business Profile. So um, when we're putting up a Google business profile, we're doing a little bit of brand building in order to attract your optimal client. You wanna make sure that you choose images. I have clients every day that call me that said it was so cool that I could look into your classroom. I could see how the tables are set up. I could see what kind of chairs you have. People get real nervous that they're gonna be in somebody's basement with a folding table and chairs and the chairs are just not gonna support their weight or not be comfortable for an eight hour class. And so they enjoy seeing that you need to set your hours. Um, you need to be reasonable when setting that. I like to leave my hours a little bit longer than my competition in the area. Uh, you need to give people multiple ways to connect with you, whether that's calling you on the phone, chatting with you, and more. You need to add a link to your actual website, assuming that you have one. If you don't have one, don't worry. We have ways to get that done for way less than you think. Uh, you should list the services that you offer. Uh, it just makes searchability so much better for you. Um, you can list up to 20 communities that you service. Me personally, I pick 20 communities all outside the Detroit Metroplex that are all um, well-represented communities where it's got the higher uh, concentration of people. Uh, we can show our Google reviews and again, add photos. Um, 
are you who here is listed on Google? It literally takes 15 minutes. Do does anybody here have a Google my profile already set up? Oh, David, nothing at all wrong with folding tables and chairs. That's what we have. It's just um, we sometimes have people who are a little bit larger in um, stature. And when they see like a, a a regular like card table folding chair, they freak out because they know that they can't, it won't support them. So, okay, you will today. I'm glad to hear that. I hosted a webinar um, a couple of weeks ago where we talked about setting up a Google uh, My Business profile. And I was so excited when I saw that some people that I kind of peeked in on from who, um, attended the webinar, I saw that they got the leap on that. It's important to um, get a Google listing up and running just because it takes a while for it to get populated. And it's going to take a while for you to go from page nine of the listing all the way up to the first or second page. So it literally takes less than 15 minutes to set something up. So um, this is the website that you go to. It's uh, business.google.com. And you type in your business name. And it's funny because um, some people have kind of set up a Google My Business profile and they just didn't realize it. Or maybe they had a friend who did it for them or whatever. So um, if you can't find your business on there, you can click right here and it'll say to add your business to Google. And then you start with building your profile. You put in your business name, you put in your business category. I list myself as a firearm academy. Um, it just what is what works best for me. Um, I also, um, once you get a Google My Business profile, you can go in and put in a secondary um, type of business. And I usually put in adult education. Um, you can add a location. Uh, it'll show up on Google Maps if somebody's looking for your business. If you have an actual place, that you teach at, you can add that location. If you travel or maybe you have customers come to your home and you don't necessarily want that showing up, that's okay too. You can choose no. Um, if you did choose yes, you then add in your business information. And it says, do you provide deliveries or home and office visits? So if you're a traveling instructor, if maybe you um, visit different ranges or different locales, maybe you teach at the a library, maybe you teach at um, the BFW hall, um, you can put that you do provide that and it will get you away from having to put an address in. And then the areas that you serve, initially it's going to ask you to put in a select area or a specific area. Once your profile is set up, Google's going to let you go back in and add additional areas. So if somebody were looking and they were saying uh, concealed pistol license classes near Chicago, um, if you wanted to put in uh, Elk Grove Village and Arlington and all the other uh, big cities around it, you're able to do that later. Um, you want to put in the details about how people are going to contact you, your phone number, your website, and then they are going to want to verify your business. So they're going to, if you used an address, they're going to send you a postcard by mail. If you used a, um, that you're traveling, they're going to find a video way or a electronic way to have them verify that you are in fact that business owner. Uh, you can add your hours. I have a client that I'm working with currently. He is a CPL instructor in, in metropolitan Chicago area. And when I looked at his Google My Business profile, he had it set up where he was only open Saturday and Sunday because that's when he teaches classes. I encourage anyone um, that puts up a Google My Business profile to have hours throughout the week as well. When people go on to Google and they're looking for things and it shows that you're closed Monday through Friday, um, they may not call you. And so I encourage you to have some business hours listed throughout the week. And then it asks you if you wanna add messaging and that would be another way for someone to be able to get a hold of you. They offer messaging on Google. It's a chat platform. And that way, if somebody's maybe sitting in their cube farm at work and they would rather send you a message rather than call you, they're able to do that. 
Uh, you can set up a business description. This business description is incredibly important that you make sure that you have as many keywords in there that someone would be looking for uh, to find your business on the internet. So if you are a instructor who teaches concealed pistol license training, make sure you spell that out. If there's an acronym for it in your area, make sure you put that on there. If you are doing private firearm training lessons, if you're doing self-defense, if you're doing avert, if you're doing any kind of uh, real estate safety training, any of that should be listed in there in your business description. Um, again, photos of your business. And then you can start advertising immediately with Google Ads. Not necessary if you're looking to move yourself up the profile immediately. Um, that would be a great way to do it rather than waiting for it to organically get up there for free. Um, you can start Google, Google Ads at any time. And then if you don't have a custom domain name for a website, if it's something you've been thinking about, you can buy it direct uh, from Google. And then once you're verified, all of your edits are going to show up and you're going to find yourself on Google. So here is the components of Google's uh, ranking algorithm, how they determine how you rank in Google. And you look at this and you feel like this. Um, to bottom line it, there's three hours of ranking for Google when it comes to getting yourself put here into the rankings of Google's businesses that are going to show up. They're looking at the radius of where you are in conjunction to the person who's searching for you, your reviews, and your responsiveness. And then in no particular order, they're looking for high quality content, not only in your explanation of who you are, but also on your website, if you list a website, they're going to want to make sure that your uh, website is mobile friendly, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, the reason for that is the majority of the people who are Googling businesses in their area are in fact using a mobile device in order to do so. Um, they want to look at the page experience, the uh, freshness of the content that you have on your page. Adding a blog to your website is a great way to keep things fresh. Me personally, I do blog articles. I also make sure that I list my um, calendar on the website and I update it regularly so that I have current content going up there. Uh, they're going to look for your page speed, how quickly your page loads, and some internal and external links to your page. So as far as radius, radius depends on um, how far each um, other instructor is around the area that someone is searching. So if they're putting in just Detroit, not putting in a suburb like where we are, uh, it could be that uh, there's 20 instructors who list Detroit as their primary, excuse me, just a minute, I have a tickle. A tickle in my throat, can you grab water? Sorry. So it just depends. You can list up to 20 service areas. Man, oh man. Outside of uh, uh, the, the, the Google side, there was a, a, question, a quick question about uh, Facebook and getting your, your content uh, blocked on Facebook. And we do have an upcoming uh, webinar on that on November 25th. I'll see if I can <clears throat> grab the URL for the policy for you so you can uh, you know, use that as as a reference, but it uh, it shouldn't be a problem. That doesn't mean you won't get blocked. It's kind of the the rub. It, it is it is where we are these days. As uh, our uh, our industry gets kind of unfairly uh, treated in a number of different areas, including of course social media. So we just have to kind of uh, yeah zig and zag around it. And uh, that's one of the reasons why we're trying to get together uh, and 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 form a group is so that we can help each other and kind of let each other know what's working and what's not working. So. Yeah, I've had a history uh, with Facebook. Facebook, um, I am a prolific meme poster or was a prolific meme poster. Um, almost 17,000 followers on my Facebook page for Detroit Arms. 
about a thousand people on my personal page. And I uh, tend to post a lot of memes. Uh, Facebook decided uh, that I wasn't allowed to post anything with a firearm in the picture because I was no longer a FFL, a firearm retailer. So they would occasionally ding me for uh, putting firearms on the page. Then it got to be that they would ding me for the memes that I would put on the page. Uh, at the beginning of this year, I got shut down uh, in January. I got like a 60 day uh, your shutdown thing. I came back online. I was online for less than 48 hours and uh, Facebook shut me down again for 90 days. So I had my first almost six months of the year this year where I was not allowed to advertise. Anything that I was posting was being shoved to the lowest uh, part of anyone's feed. I was not able to put events on Facebook. I was not able to do pretty much anything on Facebook. It really, really, really took a toll. Um, but back to this uh, review of content. It's more than just getting five-star reviews. When your clients take your class and they give you reviews, I know that a lot of us put our information in the um USCCA uh, website and the instructor portal, and they'll receive a request from the USCCA to give you a review. In addition to that, you should be getting Google reviews because that's one of the relevancy things that Google has for how they rank you. Um, it's not just the five stars, it's the quality of the review that counts. So they're going to lurk, look for keywords, in the reviews that your customers leave. They're gonna look for recency, how recent all of your reviews are. And uh, the quantity of positive review attributes matter. Don't pay for reviews, uh, just make sure that you have genuine reviews out there. They go so far as to compare the IP address of the reviewer and your location to make sure that you haven't asked people from all over the country who maybe haven't trained with you because you're a local trainer and uh, they will flag those as um, it disingenuous. Um, Google trusts the power, the power of word of mouth marketing. When people come to your Google page, they're making a decision of who they're gonna choose for training based on word of mouth. So they know that people are using that to base their decision. And they also wanna see you interacting with people on your review. So every time somebody gives you a review, review on Google, you should be responding to that client right there on the Google, Google platform saying, thank you for trusting us for your training. Thank you for reaching out. Really enjoyed meeting you. Hope to see you back again soon. So uh, businesses that consistently get a large number of high star ratings and reviews, get consideration and go up higher in that ranking. So it says here that 81% of consumers use Google to evaluate the quality of a local business, that Google reviews can give your business a big credibility boost without you having to spend a dime. So for all of us that are spending money sending postcards or doing print ads or whatever we're doing, the reality is a lot of people are actually just going to Google and reading what's out there. So uh, it's a good idea to get as many reviews as you can out there and uh, make sure that they're uh, as positive as possible. If you get a disingenuous ad or if you have some customer that goes off the rails, there are ways to um, refute those reviews or to at least scale them down. Sometimes there's three sides to every story. There's their side, there's your side, and there's the truth. And simply, if you get a review that is not just as stellar as you'd like it to be, sometimes it's enough that you just go on and refute um, and put up there your side of the story. So uh, mobile users make up about 63% of all users on the internet. And so for visitors to easily view your websites from any uh, device that needs to be responsive, and that's that whole responsive thing we talked about with Google. Um, it says Google prioritizes mobile page, page load speeds 
as a key metric. So you don't want to have a website that just churns and churns and churns and takes forever to load. And because uh, mobile users now outrank desktop users for searching, they put priority on uh, websites that are in fact optimized for mobile viewing. Uh, they offer free online tools in order to help you evaluate how mobile friendly your particular website is. So if you've put up a website using Wix or um, any of the other programs out there, if you wanna make sure that Google is gonna look at your website and say, hey, yes, this is a good website for mobile. Uh, there's the URL down here. You just plug it in, you put in your URL for your website. Honey, I've got it right here at the bottom of the thing and uh, you can test it. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, you want to display a variety of contact modes to make sure that your customer can get in touch with you as easily as possible. So you should consider offering phone or click to call on a mobile device. There's a little phone on there where they can actually click it without even having to dial your phone number and it calls you. You can have online chat, email, social media links, your website links, or in markets where they offer Google local service ads, you're able to add an online appointment booking link. Um, the click to call, like I say, there's a, a click to call option on the mobile platform. It doesn't show up on the desktop version of your Google My Business ad, but it does show up on a mobile thing. And so in addition to just listing your um, phone number, they can just click a button and call you. And then they also offer specialized click to call ad campaigns where you can track the calls from your ads um, with a special phone number that they link on there for you. Uh, the online chat platform is available on Google. Your Google business listings offer an online chat feature where you can live chat with a prospective client. Um, it's a good mind to put that up there because there are a lot of people, I spend a lot of time throughout the course of the day actually chatting with prospective customers on the phone because like I said, they're at work. Um, they cannot make phone calls from their cubicle without other people overhearing them. And they just really enjoy the, the chat option. It's also a little bit more anonymous. People are um, a little bit better about asking some of those uh, questions that they wouldn't want to ask on the phone with someone. So it's a great way to engage a potential client. Um, email, your email address is key. Make sure that you list your email address everywhere that you can. Uh, you might also consider getting a more professional email address than Gmail, Yahoo, AOL, all of that. Um, the question is, would you want to talk to Doe at Gmail or would you want to talk to Doe at Big D's firearm training? It just brings you up a, a level. Whatever you do, do not use the same email address you used in college, we're all grown now and we should have a message sent to the client that isn't like beerchugger99 at AOL.com. So we have a bunch of different platforms on social media that we can use, and we're going to eventually cover all of these in future events. But there's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok. Those are just some of the general ones where you can be found. Uh, your website, if you don't have a business website, you should at least consider putting up just a one-page site. It's not as expensive as you think. Uh, we can help you with that if that's something that you want to go down the path of. And it doesn't need to be extravagant. It just needs to get your basic information out there. I know there's a lot of instructors out there who do have like a one-page website where they push people to the USCCA website for registering for classes, and that's fine. Um, you should consider posting a blog uh, just to kind of keep your relevancy uh, and the freshness of your content. And then whatever platform it is you choose to create a website on, make sure it's utilized to be responsive with mobile clientele. Um, online appointment booking, that's not anything we're gonna talk about right now. Uh, most of us are not in a situation where we can do local service ads. And I just forgot to take this out of there. 
at the end of the day, what you want to do is make sure you set yourself apart from other instructors out there who are advertising their businesses on Google. I don't know if you notice uh, when you go to uh, find a USCCA instructor or classes in my area, and everybody on there has the same header that go across. That's just the generic header that the USCCA offers us. Set yourself apart, not only on the USCCA website, but also on Google. Look at the other listings and what can you do? Is it a better photo? Is it richer colors? Uh, do you have something that you do different than other uh, people? Make sure that you have uh, different ways for people to contact you. Do you know sign language? Do you know a foreign language? If you're exceptionally good with teaching elderly or whatever, business people, whatever, put it in your listing. Anything that makes you unique, make sure you put that in your listing. And then when you're putting up your listing, make sure you're setting realistic expectations. When you're setting the business hours, make sure that you're actually able to respond to customers during the time that you list on your profile. Uh, being too restrictive with your hours can affect the number of people willing to contact you. Um, if you're not able to at least text back to people during regular business hours, you might wanna consider hiring an answering service, but also remember that the quality of the contact is just as important as quantity. Um, optimize your Google listing. We're gonna talk about um, all of this during, uh, well, we've already talked about all of it, but we're gonna recover it again about claiming your business profile, making sure you complete every single section of the Google My Business profile. Be meticulous with your contact information, make sure your punctu punctuation, your capital letters, your East, North, West, South are all in there, that you do select a primary and a secondary category. Take advantage of every available contact opportunity. Use a local phone number. I've noticed there's a lot of instructors who have moved maybe from Florida to Tennessee or whatever, and they're still maintaining that Palm Beach area code. That puts people off. Wherever it is you live, make sure you get a local number. Make sure you upload videos and photographs, write a compelling description, uh, collect and respond to reviews, and just maintain your stuff. So a way to grow is, as we just discussed, getting yourself on Google, making sure that you have a highly optimized Google My Business page. Then you need to work on getting reviews. Then you need to get listed in uh, the online directory. That's where you get verified and you're actually on Google My Business. And then organically, what you're going to find is that people and customers are just going to find you a lot easier. So there are tools that you can use. Uh, there's tools for everything these days. It, it's, you know, do you keep a complete client database of client information? You can use a lot of these tools for that. Understand that your past customers are your best resource for referral business. So we're going to look to our past customers, not only to put our reviews up on Google, but to refer people to you. And for most firearms instructor, the main method of attracting new prospects is actually word of mouth referrals. So like I said, the app market is filled with helpful little business programs that you can buy to help run your business, but beware, not all tools are created equally. Um, so depending on how engaged you wish to be with your clients, both past and present, would be how you choose what uh, different tools you might use to engage. You might have an email marketing program. I used to use MailChimp. Uh, it says here, $29 a month. By the time I dumped my MailChimp account, I was paying $80 a month based on the number of people I had in my MailChimp account. Uh, I used to have a... Uh, a funnel and a landing page with uh, another company out there. I was paying the $2.97 a month. Uh, all of these other things that you can do, they really add up. So depending on how engaged you wish to be with your clients, uh, you can pick and choose those or uh, you can choose Cloud Bedrock. And that is what uh, the program that Jim designed, my husband. He would watch me every day uh, manually entering everything. I'm the queen of post-it notes and notepads and clipboards. And I would um, 
make myself little notes about who, where my clients were as far as who was uh, five years out and needed to renew their license, who had a birthday coming up, who had this, who had that, upcoming classes, who was looking for an advanced pistol training, whatever. And uh, he just took everything I would do every day and he turned it into a custom mobile app that I use. Uh, the Cloud Bedrock app lets you communicate with all your clients and leads on all of your devices, no matter whether you are on a mobile device, a desktop device, whether it's an Apple phone, an Android phone. Uh, I can talk with my clients, I can book appointments, I can make and receive calls all on the go. When I was here at the shop and taking phone calls, they were dialing my shop number. Then when I'm not here at the shop, I forward my calls to my cell phone. And what happens is that then when I'm calling people back from my cell phone, maybe I'm at the mall, maybe I'm at home, uh, customers were getting my um, personal cell phone number, which is typically fine, but you may not want people having your personal cell phone number. So he made sure that I could streamline all of my communication from one inbox now, when I return people's phone calls, there's a little phone uh, button on my phone, and it looks like it's coming from Detroit Arms. The other good part about that is if you happen to miss an incoming phone call, maybe they dialed your business line, you miss the call, you hang up on whatever what it was you were doing, and you go to return that client's call back. If they see a strange number come across, um, they don't know that Doreen Hankins is the owner of Detroit Arms. They wouldn't answer the call. It would go to voicemail. Then I'd have to wait and hope that they would pick that up and call it back. Now people see Detroit Arms come right across. They pick right up and it ends that phone tag thing. Um, <clears throat> in the app that he wrote for me or put together for me, he's got all of my communication channels coming right to my phone. So instead of having to be logged into Facebook in order to answer a Facebook chat or logged into Google to answer a Google chat or logged into anything on the web, uh, it all streams into one area and I'm able to find it all in one inbox. So a lot of times what would happen is somebody would reach out to me and they would send me a text on Facebook or they would send me a text somewhere and I would have to try to search it down. So um, it's all on that one, one app. So let's talk about missed calls. Um, I'm a one man show, it's, it's me. Uh, I do have an instructor that works with me, but when it comes to day-to-day -day business activities, putting all the butts in seats, telling people about me, every phone call comes to me. So um, I can be very, very, very busy on the phone and I can be not very busy on the phone. The reality is that I want to capture every potential lead that I can possibly. I don't have unlimited staff members. I can see what you're saying, Jim. Um, so if I don't answer a call, there's no guarantee that that client is going to leave a message or that they're going to ever call back. So my goal is to call everybody back as soon as I can. So uh, what he set up is that when I am on the phone or if I miss a call, the um, Cloud Bedrock app automatically captures the caller's information. So I know their name, I know their phone number, and then he texts them back with a little message saying, hey, sorry, I missed your call. How can I help? So knowing that 62% of calls to small and uh, medium-sized businesses go unanswered, you're up against that Google list of instructors. If they call you and you don't answer, they don't want to listen to your voicemail. They just hang up. They call the next person on the list. Um, there are ways to get custom tracked phone numbers for that. So if you want to see where people are getting your information from, uh, if they're coming to you from Facebook, if they're coming to you from Google, blah, 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 he can track all of that for you. Um, do you really know how much a missed call costs you? Uh, here we've got 80% of all business communications take place over the phone. 85% of people whose call are whose calls aren't answered, they're not going to call you back. Um, more than 60% of unhappy clients will take their business elsewhere. If somebody's just looking to get into a class this weekend and nobody's answering their phone, 
they're going to go just down that list, not even caring how qualified the instructor is in order to find someone to answer their questions. So there's a lot of reasons why you might miss a call. Uh, you may have insufficient staff. That would be me. I'm, I'm it. I'm the one answering the phone. So if I'm otherwise engaged, whatever it is, if it's because I'm at a doctor's appointment, if it's because I'm already on the range working with a student, if it's because I just can't get to my phone when it's ringing, um, they're not going to necessarily call me back. I need to answer or I need to engage clients regardless. My average student spends $100 with me. I know a lot of you have classes that are two-day classes, so you charge a little more, $250, $300. But on the average, um, depending on your call volume and how many missed calls you make or how many missed calls you have per month, this could be the actual revenue that you that you could lose. Uh, Jim actually pulled my phone records uh, for the last 30 days earlier today. And I had, um, this is my, how many completed calls I had, how many times they called I think and it was I like was a, busy. Yeah, 157, uh, 157 calls. And, and this is pretty average for a small uh, business. Uh, you, know, you know, roughly a quarter of the calls were uh, you know, gone, uh, were missed for whatever reason. In her case, uh, 43 calls. 43 calls. Yeah. Were uh, missed. Were missed. Yep. yep. And so I had 157 total calls. Average length of the call was just around three minutes. I had 43 missed calls, 27% no answer rate, 2.5% busy. So there were 26 calls in there that I saved with a, a missed call text back program. If I can get somebody on the telephone, I can pretty much close them. A lot of these missed calls could have been telemousketeers, could have been um, multiple phone calls from the same client. But the reality was with that of those missed phone calls, I had 26 calls that I saved simply by having an automated text go out to a client, say, hey, I'm sorry, I just missed your call. I'll be with you in a moment. What can I help you with? And uh, that's what it put revenue wise in my pocket. Um, there are things that are available as well, web chat. Uh, I've got a widget on my website page. I've got a widget on the Google ad. I've got a widget on my shopping cart. And all of those enable people to reach out to me, even if I'm not technically available, I'm not sitting at my seat so that I'm logged in to see that it comes right to my phone so that I'm able to answer it on my phone. I've got SMS texting. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows what that is. It's short message text service. It's just the text that you receive, the general text that you receive on your phone. Uh, compared to email, text messages are shown to be way more effective. They have a 98% open rate compared to 20% for email. Clients are more likely to respond and not just read your text message, but also respond. And um, I don't know how many times I've had where a client says I didn't get the email. Um, oftentimes our range is not in the same building as our classroom. Our range is about half a mile south of here on the other side of the road. The road that we're on is a crazy busy road and there's accidents there all the time. There are times that I leave for the range before my students do. Um, I have an instructor that's with them at the time. I leave for the range to meet up with my uh, range safety officers to set all the lanes up and get everything ready. And I'll come through and find out that there's been a traffic jam or there's been an accident. And I can just do a simple text to let everybody know, including the instructor who's still here with the students, that they need to take an alternate route. I don't know how many times you guys have heard it, but um, I have people who no call, no show me for class all the time. Um, what does a no call, no show cost you? It would depend on how many people you're able to put in a classroom. My class size is anywhere from 20 to 50 students a, a class. But if you're a smaller instructor and you can only fit six or 12 people in a classroom, that totally affects your bottom line. 
So um, sending out reminder texts the day before a class to say, hey, remember, you're registered for class. Uh, the app helps me with reputation management in addition to um, knowing that a review came in because uh, my Google reviews, they come in through your Google platform. You don't know that they're on there until you're actually physically signed in with Google to see that they come in. Um, it gets pushed right to my phone and I'm able to interact with my clients right there, right from my phone. Uh, social media posting. I am a prolific poster. I'm a prolific social media person. I've got a Facebook, I've got a YouTube, I've got a um, TikTok, I've got all of this. Um, I could spend all day just posting and going from one place to another place to another place to another place. All I have to do is hit one button, post on all my platforms at once. Um, customer relationship management, and we can talk about this at length in a, in a future call. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I hope all of you are keeping a uh, some kind of a contact list of your clients, because, again, uh, though that is your best, best referral mode. It costs you six to seven times less money to act on a referral than it does to get yourself a new client. Uh, I keep track of my customer relationships. I keep track of uh, notes. Uh, I put things in there if maybe the last time we spoke. We talked about their dog who had been ill or their kid who just started college. I keep myself notes for that so that when I do get on a phone call with somebody, I've got relevant information that I can cover. Um, I also use that uh, customer relationship management stuff to send out custom email templates to people. Um, I send out regular emails. I send them out once a week and it shows a new tip or trick anything new that maybe came across with the USCCA. I send them any classes that I have upcoming, coupons, specials, whatever. I just keep in touch with all of my customers. One of the things we do for the range that I shoot at is that um, I send happy birthday week messages for the range. And everybody that has a birthday that week gets a free hour of range time on the range. It's drag and drop easy to put this stuff together. Doesn't take a whole lot of time. And so now you're sitting there thinking, well, what is this magical app and how much does it cost? Uh, how quickly can you get started? What if you don't like the results you get? Even if you have a website, can we help? And the biggest one is, oh my gosh, I'm not technologically advanced. Will this work for me? I'm going to tell you that I am not technologically advanced. That's why my child is sitting right next to me monitoring my every action so that I can uh, uh, have his help if I need to swap a screen or whatever. Um, I am all thumbs. Like I said, I'm the post-it note queen. I am the queen of writing things down on paper. I have gone to having everything um, taken and put into my little phone and everything just shows up and it's really easy to find and it keeps track of everything. And I schedule emails to go out and I get referral business. Like I say, um, I have between 20 and 40 students for every class that I do. I'm doing classes every week. Um, a lot of that business is in fact referral business. I do offer my alumni to come back into my class for free with a paying student. So that also encourages a little bit more activity. I have the flexibility. I can hold 60 people in my classroom. I have the flexibility for that. If you don't, you don't. But I do encourage people to come back. Um, <clears throat> lots of great information um, with getting yourself set up on Google tonight. But I do encourage you to consider the Cloud Bedrock app. Let's see. I'm just looking at some of the notes that come in here. Um, just because it is streamlined what it is that I do. The text back program that I have for missed calls, as you saw, generated $2,600 worth of revenue for me. Stuff that I would have lost had I uh, not made phone calls back. I know a lot of us will see a missed call. We may just dial it and say, hey, 
I uh, sorry I missed your call, but it may not be immediate that we see that missed call. Uh, today, earlier today, I left the house and actually um, left my phone behind. And so even though I didn't even have my phone in my possession for a period of time, if somebody did call me, they still got a text message saying, hey, sorry, I missed your call. Uh, what can I do to help you? And the minute I got my phone back in my hand, I was able to recapture that call, answer the question, do what I needed to do, and um, close the business. Uh, it is worth every penny. If anyone here is uh, interested in how to get set up with Cloud Bedrock, Jim has put together this uh, QR code. You can go to our Cloud Bedrock page and do the cloudbedrock.com slash pricing. If you want to see the two plans that we have, we have an essentials plan, which is just the basics. It's the, the texting, it's the messaging, it's the web chat, it's all the reputation management tools. All of my customers are automatically given a link to Google following their class. And it's giving and it's giving them directive as far as, hey, would you mind leaving me a review? I hope you enjoyed your class today. Leave me some message as far as, you know, how you enjoyed your class on Google. It helps students just like you find me so that they can have the same experience you do. It goes out automatically. I don't have to remember to send it. It's just automated in uh the way that things go out. We have a, a $4.97 a month plan. It's a professional plan that includes uh, websites and funnels and all kinds of fun things. Um, if you are truly just starting out um, and don't have a website and don't have any of that, um, it's a way to get yourself out there professional looking with uh, domain names and all of that. Any way you look at it, uh, I'm available to you as a member of the Cloud Bedrock family. And I'm a USCCA instructor. Jim's a USCCA instructor. I'm available to you. Uh, my clients will also receive uh, white label services. I've developed a number of classes that aren't necessarily state mandated classes, but just add on classes. Um, things like the uh, the real estate agent safety program. I don't know if any of you have given that, but I give that class once a week to up to 50 people in a room uh, at real estate agents who are hosting their sales meetings. And they add this on as something that I talk to them about. It's a great way to get CPL students because a lot of those uh, real estate agents that see the class want to sign up. I not only have that class in person, but I have an online version of that class that I can provide. And it's a great way um, to gather potential students. Uh, look for us on Facebook. Pewpros.com is what we're calling ourselves on Facebook. We've got a community so far, 73 members. And I think Jim started this on Monday of this week where we are going to post videos and ideas and upcoming training opportunities. We're also on YouTube. Again, it's pro, pro, ppros.com. I can't even say it. That was your idea. Com, I know. <laughs> slash YouTube. <clears throat> if you're interested, <clears throat> excuse me. I did an interview with Marcus uh, back in June. Uh, we did our first interview together. Marcus routinely comes to class here. In fact, he's coming to class this Sunday to just kind of uh, touch base with students, but um, he tells his story. If you're interested in learning about his story, he tells his story and it's a great story. Um, I hope you all learned something here today. If there's anything I can do to kind of help you get through the whole Google um, process of getting a Google business profile, if you already have a Google business profile out there and you want me to uh, walk you through putting in 20 communities and making sure that you've got it uh, optimized as best as it should. I'm always available to take a look at that. I had a gentleman uh, this past week. Uh, he has a training company in Tennessee. And uh, 
I just basically went out to his Google My Business profile, walked along with him and said, hey, add this, add that, change this word. Uh, we went to his website and made sure that he had links from his website to the Google page. Google looks for reciprocal links. So I made sure that he had a link to Google on his web page and back. Uh, little things like that can tweak uh, what you've got going on. Uh, I, I myself get a lot of activity off of Google. Those phone calls that we showed you were just the phone calls that were coming in uh, through the Google page. I do some uh, guerrilla marketing, we call it, where I put um, my business cards I have a business card that advertises just our class on it. And um, I put them in restaurants everywhere. I make flyers with pull tags. When we have businesses in the area that have like community boards, I put those up so that people are able to rip a tag off and call me to do classes. I offer to speak tomorrow morning. I have a 10 minute uh, speaking engagement at a business by the Bay web uh, group meeting that we go to, to kind of encourage people to consider self-defense. Uh, did anyone have um, any questions here? Or was there anything that you were looking to get out of all of this? Sorry about my little choking attack. I don't know what that was. I think there was actually a piece of cat hair or something on my shirt that I inhaled. I, I don't know what it is, but... Uh, well, thank you, Ashley. I'm hoping that you got out of this what you wanted to get out of it. Um, if you think of something later, please always feel free to reach out to, to us. I'm available. Um, yeah, the online um, training courses are very profitable. I have my renewal course. When people come to me and do a three hour in person, I charge them uh, $50. When they come and they do the video on demand, I charge them $37.95. And then I have a book that I published that gets direct sent to them via email. It's an ebook, and they can buy that for $20. If they sign on for the uh, video class, they not only get the video class, but they also get the ebook. I have an ebook that I wrote for uh, preparing for your CPL class. It's just an informational, hey, this is what you are going to experience at the range. This is how you should dress. This is how you should legally transport a firearm if you're bringing one with you. Uh, some of the vernacular uh, that they are going to hear in class so that they understand what uh, 45 ACP means or what a magazine is, what a clip is, what a, um, any of the stances are. I go through all of that in this book so that when they come to class, even if they've never touched a firearm before, a lot of the information that they are uh, receiving or hearing in class, they're not sitting there wondering, you know, what does that mean? What does that mean? Because they've read through all of it. I provided that book to a trainer in the Chicago area that we're working with, and we're going to customize it so that it's appears as though it's a, a book that he wrote for his students with his information. And he's able to just email that in PDF form to his students. And then they come to your class a little bit better prepared than they would have if they didn't have any experience at all. All right. <clears throat> yeah, Kimberly, act, co contact me anytime. I'm in the office every day, uh, Monday through Sunday. So uh, just reach out to me. There was actually a link, Jim, can you put that up where if you want to book me for uh, some time to uh, actually go over everything with you so that I'm yeah. certain. I'll put or Doreen's can... uh, calendar. Everybody really wants to talk to Doreen. Nobody wants to talk to me. So. Yeah, or, well, like... <laughs> they know that you talk the hind leg off a of jackass if given the opportunity. <laughs> it's going to shut you down right now. Um, but yeah, if you want to guarantee a space with me, or you can always just call Detroit Arms, 586-598-5300, um, call Cloud Bedrock. And if I ever remembered that phone number, it's 586-244-8900, I believe. Wow. Yeah. I know. I just it. pulled that Even out. Live. I did it. Live. The, the only phone yeah. numbers I know are my mom's, Jet's Pizza, 
and Detroit Arms. Uh, beyond that, I have not memorized the phone number in 20 years because it's all stored in my phone. So um, awesome. I'm always available for, for um, consultation if you want to talk. I encourage you to think about the Cloud Bedrock app. Uh, Jim's giving everybody 10% off the prices that you see there. It's in perpetuity. It's as long as you become are, are a member of the Cloud Bedrock family. Uh, I will work with you each one-on-one -on -one in developing email programs and everything. Um, I'm there for you. I have classes every week, but we can kind of uh, juggle around the classes. Like I said, I have an instructor who does the majority of the actual physical teaching because I'm the party planner. I'm the person responsible for putting butts in seats. And I want to help everyone on the call be able to put as many butts in seats as you can. Um, can I speak more about Zoom training? Absolutely. Uh, I, back when COVID hit, I was, of course, I've been doing this for 15 years, the whole CPL training thing, but, um, you know, our classes had always been in person. And so I received uh, permission from the state of Michigan to take my CPL class and teach the first five hours of that class online. And so I would teach the first five hours of the class online. I stacked up a couple hundred, well, actually about 600 students where I had done online classes. And then when the state finally opened up for us to be able to gather in person and actually do the shooting portion, the state said, well, you can have 50 people if you're gathering outside, you can have 10 people if you're gathering indoors. So of course, when they said 50 people outside, it was June, the weather was beautiful. Um, bought a big tent, a 40 by 60 tent, bought a hundred chairs, stuck them out there uh, in the yard right next to the range. And then I would cir circle 50 people a day uh, through the range, 10 people at a time to, to do the work. We did a lot of the range work with non-lethal uh, trainer pistols, the grip and the sighting and all of that. And then we actually went in and the state of Michigan requires that you put 30 rounds of uh, ammo on paper um, in order to qualify. So um, I was seeing hundreds of students a month uh, when the COVID restrictions. Now I do a uh, two evening Michigan CPL class where I do the first five hours of the class online two nights in a row, two and a half hours each evening. Very popular. People like to come home, get their dinner in them. We start class at seven. We're done by 930 each night. And then I have a variety of days and times that they can come and actually finish the three hours of uh, range related work that we have. Um, I do via Zoom webinar. I do the firearm safety. I do introduction to handguns. I do um, the real estate agent safety class. Uh, it's a great way to work with people one on one if they don't want to come in or to work with groups of people. Um, I've even got some of these recorded that they can just log on and, and watch a recording as well. Um, appointment time is Eastern. Yeah, we're here in Michigan, so it's Eastern Standard Time. Anything else? I hope everyone who joined today got something out of it. And if you didn't, um, put down here what it was that you hope that you would get out of it. And I'll make sure I give you that information as well. The whole Google machine is a great way to set yourself up for success. Um, it's just the beginning. It's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to talk about Facebook. We're going to talk about all the other ways to have people find you, but the majority of society is just, you know, Google it, you know, looking for a trainer, Google it. Um, making sure that when you do have somebody find you, the ability to answer those phone calls when they come in is huge. Um, that's where Cloud Bedrock comes in and helps you and the chats. kind of manage yep. all that, the chats mm -hmm. to, to manage all of that. Uh, I used to be crazy with the phone because I'm the only person answering um, since getting 
the ability to send out an automated text when I'm already on the phone and then following back up, my close rate has just skyrocketed. Um, I literally get thousands of dollars more a month in between my uh, video stuff that's out there running, the ability to do Zoom webinars with students. Um, a lot of those webinars are smaller classes, so I'll tile them all up there like the Brady Bunch. Some people like to stay anonymous. They don't like to turn their camera on. They don't like to use a microphone. They only want to chat, and that's okay. Um, I do have ways of making sure that somebody is engaged and paying attention. When I do a class, there's two instructors on the line so that if I don't see somebody interacting with the instructor when he's throwing out uh, questions, things that you need to answer, and if somebody's just been silent, I'll personally message somebody and say, hey, are you still with us? Um, if I've determined that somebody's turned their uh, webinar on, and then they've gone off to do bigger and better things. They're just here for the credit. I will dump them from the call and then make them come back through a class in the future. And everybody knows that from the, the moment that they sign on to the call that, hey, I am monitoring activity. I will want to make sure, you know, if you're on camera, I can see that you're on camera. Uh, if you're not moving, I'm gonna think it's a picture, but if you're on camera and I could see you and we're having, um, good good conversation uh, I know that they're present and learning oh you're from Detroit fantastic I'm I am a Detroit native born and raised here and in, in the city and uh, have lived in the suburbs Jim's an import I got him from uh, Indiana so Anyone have any questions? You know, Celia, I'm gonna I'm gonna Eric stop you. Eric has a question. He's got his hand raised, anyways. Eric, did you have a question? Can we make it so that they can talk the auto replay? I'm sorry. It says auto reply, actually. Oh, auto reply. Yeah, reading is fundamental. Um, the auto reply, it can say anything you want it to say. On mine, I have, um, sorry, I missed your call. I'll be with you shortly. Um, is there anything you want to talk about in particular? And um, that way, if they're just looking for the class schedule, uh, I can push them the class schedule. If they're looking for what my hours are, I can push them my hours. I will always call them back, but I can give them exactly what they're looking for just by pushing that across to them before I give them a call back. How you set it up is you become a member of Cloud Bedrock. You start with the 197 program if that's um, all you're looking to do, if you're looking at setting up an entire business brand and a website and all the all the bells and whistles, that would be the $4.97 a month plan. You are month to month. You can cancel at any time. You're not held uh, in any giant contract. The 10% off he's offering, Jim's offering, is in perpetuity. So as long as you're a client of ours, uh, you will get that 10% off every month. Um, unless you leave and nobody would ever want to leave. So, and also on the auto reply. So you can also uh, put rules in there for uh, time of day and day of week. So you can have a different auto reply uh, for your after hours versus your, your on hours. And you just happen to miss it for just a few seconds and you let them know that you'll be right with them, whether, but if it's, you know, one in the morning, uh, you can have a more uh, canned response that provides your hours and perhaps some quick links for uh, frequently asked questions and, uh, you know, and handle it that way. And then one of the things that uh, is uh, super useful that we found, uh, like, for example, the uh, Chicago based uh, firm that we were talking to that actually they signed up and didn't even really realize that this feature was there was that ability to, uh, to have multiple people on the on the uh, uh, the team account and be able to respond because they both work daytime jobs and they could kind of trade off on who was uh, either fielding the calls or fielding the chats. And so you can have any, any one of a number of people, uh, you know, 
with the app that you uh, provide the account to to respond on your behalf. So so it's it's not just automated; it's actual you know humans that are you know uh, responding to those messages. So right. An example: I was with a client uh, yesterday on the range just for an hour, but I had. Uh, requests come through, phone calls and requests come through while I was out on the range, Jim was able to reply to those. They were simply looking for what's your, you know, what's your website address? How do I register for a class? Do you have a class this Sunday? Are there any seats available? And he was able to answer those individuals. And then I followed up with them later to say, hey, you know, did did you accomplish what it was you had hoped to accomplish? Is there anything else I can answer for you? And it was great. Otherwise I would have missed that call. They would have just called the next instructor on the list. Metropolitan Detroit is rife with instructors. There's an instructor on every corner here. And my goal is to set myself apart and to make sure that I contact my potential students as soon as possible when they're looking to to reach to me. Like I say, I spend an awful lot of time on chat. People like to chat and um, Jim will say, who are you talking to? And it's just like, it's just another student that wanted to ask questions. And I don't know if it's because they can't talk because they're at work. I don't know if it's because they'd rather see it in writing in case I'm lying to them and they come to class and it's three times as much money. I don't know what the attraction is, but I chat with people all day long and it's made a huge difference in uh, how I do business. It's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that discount is going to be good. um, Like I said, in perpetuity. So if you start out at the 197 and then you want to move to the 497, maybe you want to kick it up a notch. Absolutely. It it will be offered. And as long as you're a, a paying client of Cloud Bedrock. You heard it from me and I could text it to you if you want me to. (laughs) Well, that was one thing I, I, I think we need to update the slide on too, is the web chat is actually uh, not just web chat. So I don't know if you've used a lot of uh, web chats, uh, you know, uh, where, you know, customer services there and you're, and and you as the customer are chained to the web page because you've got this chat open and, you know, they just said they'll they'll be right with you and the average agent responds in seven minutes or something like that, right? And you're like, uh, oh, now I've got to keep this uh, you know, this web page open. And that drives me crazy because I've always always got about, you know, 17 million browser tabs open and I miss the chat when they they come back and you have to start all over. Um, with uh, Cloud Bedrox chat, it's actually a uh, an SMS uh, a text uh, a chat. So you put your 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 SMS number in as the customer ask your question. And then if you don't want to wait around, you can just disappear. The response is going to come to your phone. So you as the business owner have gotten a contact and the customer has got a better experience because they're not, uh, you know, tied to that web page for the entire time. Right. So something else that's kind of an, an advantage. Oh, you are so welcome, Brandon. If there's anything we can do again, feel free to reach out. If you want a guaranteed slot on my calendar, do it in the um, link that Jim sent out there for my actual calendar. Otherwise, feel free to call anytime. And uh, I hope to see all of you back in a future webinar. We have one next week, I believe. Uh, The Facebook one, I think it's next Friday. We're going to do one on uh, Facebook advertising, some do's and don'ts. I see so many people wasting ad spend. And Facebook, if you tell them you want to spend $35 a day, by gosh, they're going to spend your $35 a day, even if it's in markets that you don't want it in, even it's if it's the people that you don't want to see it, um, they will it's spend that money. Yeah, yeah, she they'll, shows they'll me every day, every day. It's, they are showing they're showing their ads out of state, like like multiple states away, because they've inadvertently uh you know clicked the button that you know that allows that to happen. And uh yeah, it'll burn through your uh, ad budget pretty quick if you're <laughs> advertising right. to the entire country. So every day. Yeah. So if you're ever in between now and then, if that's what if there's anything that you can take out of this, uh look at the uh, uh your uh, ad manager settings and make sure. Uh, that you're limiting the ads to your location. 
So if you're doing in-person classes. Sure. All right. Well, it was great to meet everyone. Feel free to reach out anytime. And I hope to see you back here next next week for our uh, Friday, November 25th. Everybody will be uh, stuffed full of turkey by then and looking for something to do. So log on and, and join us for that webinar. Thank you all for coming and we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much.